Hey folks, so originally today's battle was going to be two random Wi-Fi battles that were really, really god-awful, and as I was watching I was wondering what the hell was I thinking. Um, but you know, uh, I like putting up those kinds of battles occasionally, uh, and I really didn't have any other choice because I hadn't had enough friend battles with this team. Um, but then Metallic Bayleaf uh, PMs me out of the blue and is like, hey, do you want to have an OU battle? I'm like, yeah, sure. And so this battle was good enough that I decided I'd rather post this instead of the uh, random Wi-Fi battles. Although the thing is, I'd actually already edited and narrated those random Wi-Fi battles. So I'm actually posting them anyway as unlisted, um, and you can watch them. There's a link in the description. So yeah, anyway, um, looking at his team, I figured that Kim Kimiko was a, uh, my scarfed, uh, Flygon was my best lead option, so I could scout out who he sent out. And he sent out Gengar, which I was not expecting. So I'm thinking it's probably a Sash... Gengar, and I'm gonna break its sash. As, um, well, actually, I'm gonna break its sash twice by U-turn and by um, setting up the sandstream. Um, but anyway, it's actually a Trick Room Gengar, and I'm just scratching my head thinking, a Trick Room Gengar. And I remember looking at his team and thinking, wait, but who's really benefiting from the Trick Room? Like he has a lot of Pokemon. He has a Ninjask on his team. Why would he do Trick Room? So anyway, I go ahead and go for the crunch, not wanting to overpredict, and I take out his Gengar. Um, and I was really glad that it didn't go for the Focus Blast first turn, and I was really glad that it went for the, um, the Trick Room, so that I went first and he couldn't get a Focus Blast on me the second turn. So really, really strange, and so I think, oh, so he sends out Machamp, I'm like, oh, okay, this makes sense, I guess. Machamp is pretty slow, um, yeah, I guess, so I consider who to send in, and I think I really don't have anyone who's a safe switch in to Machamp, and so I decide I'm gonna go ahead and go for, um, go ahead and send in my Celebi, thinking that he's probably gonna go for a, a Dynamic Punch, um, and thinking that I can set up Stealth Rocks with Celebi on the next turn. Anyway, so here comes the Dynamic Punch, and as you can see, it does absolutely nothing, although I do get confused, of course. Um, he's got some Life Orb recoil, and frankly, with Life Orb plus the Sand, it looks like that residual damage is doing more than he actually did to me. Okay, that's not quite true, but you know, you know, I'm exaggerating a little bit. Um, I see that um, he's going to go first, uh, and so I decide that I'm. I look at my moves that I was. I'm like, wait, where's Stealth Rocks? And I realize I didn't actually put it on this set. And I this was the wrong Celebi. I brought up the wrong Celebi to the match. So I'm like, well, crap. Uh, what do I do now? I decide I'm going to see how much Seed Bomb does. Um, I was hoping that I'd scare him out with Celebi, thinking he, that I was hoping that he'd think I was running Psychic, and uh, turns out he doesn't scare quite so easily, but he also doesn't carry the Ice Punch, so this is excellent for me. Uh, my attacks are doing a decent amount of damage, his Cross Chops are doing a lot of damage too, but I've got the Recover, so I can stall him out. I can actually, uh, yeah, I might snap out of the confusion, and I didn't get hit once in the confusion, so that's really awesome for me. Um, I recovered back my health, and the Trick Room ends, and I actually wish it had lasted one more turn, because then I could have um, recover stalled him a little bit longer. Uh, instead, I'm going to go for the Seed Bomb this turn, um, and that is going to take him out. Um, I, you know, Seed Bomb was a better move rather than recover stalling, um, you know, sorry, Life Warp stalling, because, um, you know, I go first at this point. So I do manage to take him out. And now he sends out his Ninjask, and I'm fearing the x so I'm going to go ahead and call Celebi back. Uh, and then I look, and I decide I'm going to go ahead and send out Roomba, who should be able to wall anything this guy can do. Um, instead he goes for the Slash. I'm not sure why. I don't know what the advantage of Slash is over x I guess, uh, does x not have the high critical hit ratio? Anyway, I'm not sure what the deal is there. Um, the smart move would probably have been to uh, go for the Swords Dance. Um, although maybe he doesn't run the Swords Dance, I don't know. But anyway, I get a little bit of Leftovers Recovery, uh, and he goes for the Baton Pass. So, I mean, it's a Ninjask, of course it's going to Baton Pass, so I, now I wonder who he's going to Baton Pass into. Actually, to be completely honest, at the time of the battle, I forgot that Ninjasks do the whole Baton Pass thing. I've, I don't think I've ever seen one in battle, or if I have, it's very rare that I've seen these Wi-Fi battles. But anyway, um, T-Bolt actually does more than half, and then I get an awful bit of hacks. I'm really sorry, Metallic Bailey. Um, that para hacks was would have po potentially changed the game. I mean, I would have had to really scramble depending on the set that Metagross was running. Um, but I do manage to take it out, and so that is that. Uh, and I'm, again, I'm really sorry. 
Uh, he goes ahead and sends out Infernape, and I decide that I want Roomba around to deal with his Gyarados. So I'm going to go ahead and call back, and looking over who I'm going to send, I decide that really what I really need is a free switch-in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and send out Celebi. Okay, consider it for a while. But eventually I do settle on Celebi, because um, Celebi's not really useful anymore, uh, based on the Pokemon that he has left. And I really do need that safe switch-in. Uh, so I send out Celebi. He goes for Calm Mind. That I was not expecting. Nasty plot I might have expected. Um, you know, lots of things I would have expected before uh, Calm Mind. Uh, so anyway, I take, you know, I'm faster, which is also very interesting. Good to know because I don't invest anything in, I didn't invest anything in Celebi's speed, so that's kind of interesting. Um, it's actually a little bit unfortunate because that means I can't get a, get in a free switch in for a U-turn. Um, and I decide what to do, and both of my attacks are resisted. There's not really much I can do. I decide I'm going to go for the Seed Bomb and hope that he takes the bait at some point. So I go for the Seed Bomb. It hits. Uh, doesn't do very much, but, you know, it does more than nothing. Um, and he goes a a again for the Calm Mind, and I think, well, that's really strange. And I decide, well, okay, do I want to let him set up? Because obviously he can keep on Calm Minding all day. I'm not going to be taking him out anytime soon. And I decide, okay, well... If I send out Aerodactyl once this guy's KO'd, then uh, I have the Focus Sash, so even if he vacuum waves me, I'll still be okay as long as I have the safe switch. Because, um, yeah, so anyway, here comes a fire, uh, he finally takes the bait, goes for the flamethrower, at plus two Celebi didn't stand a chance, especially considering this is a physically defensive Celebi. Celebi goes down, and that's a little bit sad, um, but now I get my free switch into Aerodactyl, just as I was planning. Um, and so now I'm going to go ahead and go for the um, super effective 100% accurate Earthquake, and there's really nothing he can do about it. Um, go for the Earthquake, I am faster. He didn't go for the Vacuum Wave, so I'm like, what? I think this was just the strangest thing ever. I'm not sure what he was thinking. Um, because a plus two Vacuum Wave probably would have gotten me down to my Sash. But I do manage to take out his Infernape, and that is excellent for me. Uh, next after him is Gyarados, and it's going to get the Intimidate, um, and so it's probably that probably means it's going to survive... Uh, rock slide, and so, eh, okay, so I go for the rock slide, and you know, I'm thinking, okay, well, um, this will probably be a 2 a KO, and indeed it is a 2 a KO. I don't get the flinch hacks, which I'm really okay with, and he goes for the dragon dance, to which I say, okay, well, you know that I'm sashed, right? I mean, seriously, you know, this is a very standard Aerodactyl set. There are very few Aerodactyls, I think, that aren't sashed, and he knows I'm not Life Orb. So, yeah, I'm not sure what he was expecting. He goes for the Ice Fang. Maybe he was hoping for the Freeze Hacks? I don't know, but um, nothing strange or wonky happens. My attacks don't miss, and I take out his Gyarados. Um, so that's excellent for me, and he's now down, I believe, to his last Pokemon. He goes ahead and sends out uh, Ninjask, and thinking that he might protect, I'm going to go ahead and go for the Roost, because, you know, he's going to outspeed me one way or the other. Nice play here going for the X-Scissor, um, that was the right decision, and it does take out my Aerodactyl. So, uh, great job there, uh, and but and now I'm going to have a free switch into um, my uh, Meta, uh, my um, Magnezone, I think I called Mag uh, Metagross earlier, so I'm sorry. I'm going to go ahead and go for the T-Bolt here, there's really nothing he can do to me, and this is going to be the game. So, um, yeah, uh, X-Scissor did a little bit more than I was expecting, but not enough to do serious damage. Um, T-Bolt is an easy KO, and bye-bye uh, Ninjask, and good game Metallic Bailey. So yeah, um, I'm really glad that I was able to put this battle up um, instead of, in addition to those two random Wi-Fi battles, because those just really torpedoed my self-esteem when I was editing them. Um, but anyway, comment, rate, subscribe, and challenge.